The following review is of a collectible based on a PG-13 movie that features several grisly deaths, drug use, and some sexual references. Thus, this review is intended for collectors ages 13 and older. What's up, Lantern fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast coming at you once again with another Green Lantern product review. This time I'm taking a look at the DC Direct DVD maquette of Hal Jordan from Green Lantern First Flight. I bought one of these about a year after the movie came out, and unfortunately, it arrived broken. But I found this one at a discount price. I'm very happy to bring you this review, so let's go ahead and get a look at the package details. On the top of the box, it says Green Lantern First Flight DVD Maquette. On the bottom, we get some product information, including the serial number of this statue. On one side of the packaging, we get a product shot, and we see that the sculptor of this piece is Karen Polinko. We get a different product shot on the opposite side, as well as the measurement specifics of this statue. The back of the box features a full body product shot, a shot of the DVD cover. There's a brief bio of Hal Jordan, as well as the Green Lantern Corps Oath. Here's a close-up of Hal Jordan's biography from First Flight. If you'd like to read this, go ahead and pause the video and do so now. Each of these maquettes come with a serial numbered certificate of authenticity. And here we see Hal Jordan out of the box and ready to take his first flight. As you might expect, I'm a huge fan of this movie, and I'm very happy to have this piece in my collection. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the loose details now. On the base, we see the Green Lantern font, and it says DC Universe Animated Original Movie. And this is a round base, and it is sturdy. The bottom of the base features the serial numbering of each of these statues. This is number 2,242 of 4,000. Here's a shot of the boots. And let me talk about the one aspect of this statue that I really don't like. And that is this foot. The fact that it is not up on the base. Uh, it actually is fused to the base. But I don't understand why they couldn't do this stepping up pose with this foot still on the base. This is where my first statue broke, and this seems like a pretty obvious design flaw. That being said, I do like the energy of this stance. Here's a look at the legs. Now remember, this is based on an animated design, so it doesn't have the usual definition in the musculature that we often see in realistic statues and realistic figures. However, the sculpting of this statue is screen accurate. I really must give Karen Polinko and DC Direct credit for the arm positioning on this statue. You can see that the left arm is chambered and the right arm is holding the green lantern ring high. And that gives this statue an amazing presence as part of your collection. Here's a close-up of the statue's torso, and this looks better than I could have imagined. Thinking about the design of the character in the movie, I wasn't sure how that would translate to a statue, but you can see some pretty good musculature here. There's a little bit of a paint issue on mine here on the wrist gauntlet, but nonetheless, this green paint, very reflective. Of course, I like metallic types of paint used for Green Lantern collectibles. And the definition on the individual muscle groups looks outstanding here. Here's a close-up of the Green Lantern Corps symbol. And as I often say in my reviews, I would have preferred a sculpted symbol. But nonetheless, I think that the way this has been executed is still effective. The way that it kind of folds between the pectoral muscles does give this statue an element of realism, and the paint applications are exact with no paint drips. 
Here's a close-up of the head sculpt, and the work here is just excellent, as you can see. In the movie, Hal Jordan's mask is definitely darker than the rest of the Green Lantern uniform, so I feel like the paint choice there was the correct move. I like the way that the chin has been sculpted, including that little cleft on the bottom there. That's some really fine work. I thought that the eyes might be a little inaccurate, but in some close-up shots, you can see the green in Hal Jordan's eyes. And as I put this statue in profile, you can see the sculpting in the hair. There is the part and various other lines that have been sculpted into the hair to denote individual strands. And I do like the paint choice as well. And here is a close-up of the all-important ring. And one of the things in First Flight that differentiates this version of Green Lantern from the various comic book versions of Hal Jordan is the fact that he has the green wrist gauntlets and the black gloves. And while I do like that color palette, I feel like the paint choice for the ring could have been better here. This light matte green doesn't look like it belongs with the rest of the statue. I feel that a metallic finish would have improved this area substantially. I certainly hope you have enjoyed this review. If so, please like and subscribe. Make sure to catch me on the Emerald Echo podcast, which is part of the Multiverse Musings vidcast, and that's available right here on YouTube. And I'll be back to the internet with more Green Lantern-related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching.